welcome to CFT 195's online lecture series. Today we're going to be talking about grain filling. So what is grain filling? Grain filling is pretty much what it sounds like, is that we're filling the grain of the wood so that we have a nice level surface. So that when we apply our top coat, the top coat is nice and perfectly smooth and level. Kind of like, very much like a piano finish. Kind of that nice glassy uh, museum quality finish. Historically, grain filling was used with pumice. Here are a couple examples of pumice right here. Now, pumice is primarily used in the French polish finish. So there are a couple methods in which you can uh, grain fill. One of them is by using a water-based grain filler or an oil-based grain filler. And much like a stain, um, a grain filler has both a binder and a vehicle. For oil-based, the binder is tongue oil, linseed oil, or varnish. The vehicle for uh, oil-based grain filler is paint thinner and mineral spirits. And for water-based, it's just water. Um, grain filling is another method in which you can color your wood as opposed to staining your wood. So there are, you can buy a plain color grain filler or a white grain filler, like for example, the water base that dries clear, you can add pigment to that, or you can actually buy oil base that has pigment already um, inside of it. Now, another method of grain filling that you can do is solely by using your top coat. You would um, apply your top coat to your wood, you would sand it back down to the surface of the wood, you'd apply your top coat again, sand it back down to the surface of the wood, Apply your top coat again, sand it back down, etc., etc., and you would continue to do that until the top coat has filled the pores of your wood. So you end up with that nice level surface. That is a method that I actually like to use myself. Now, let's talk about um, the filling agents of grain filler. Water based is an acrylic resin. Oil-based is, can be made up of a couple different um, ways. One of them is silica, another one is clay, or it can all have these tiny little um, micro balloons inside the uh, grain filler as well. So these grain fillers are what is left in the grain once the uh, grain filler is applied and then removed from the board. I'm going to show you, we're going to go into more detail about the actual application process in just a few minutes. Grain filling is um, it's a great way to add color to your wood. It creates a really beautiful um, piano-like surface and it um, that adds a nice touch to your final coat. One thing that I neglected to mention was the various different um, open grain woods uh, that we use. Ash is one of them, uh, mahogany, walnut, and oak. Now when using these woods, you would need about, for ash, you would need about two to three coats of grain filler to get it to a nice uh, level surface. For mahogany, you would need about three to four for walnut, you would need one to two, but for oak, being the most open grain wood, you would need eight to 12. Now on your, um, for your sample boards, you are not required to do eight to 12 coats on your oak. Two to three will be, will be sufficient enough um, for you to understand the process and to move on from that. Now let's talk about the grain filler that we use in class. The water-based grain filler that we use is called Crystallac, wood grain filler. The oil-based that we use, we, we use a Mohawk uh, grain filler. 
Now, Crystal Lac, when you open up the container, which I'm going to do right now, I'm going to reach off screen and grab my stir sticks. Crystal Lac I'm just going to mix it up here, is, you can see here, if you can see that, Crystal Lac is ready to use outside of the container. It's kind of, um, kind of like has a sour cream consistency, but it's good to go right out of the container. If you want to color it, you can use either Trans Tint or UTC to add color to it. And we're going to do that in the demo process. Now the oil-based, which let me put my gloves on, oil-based grain filler has to be thinned. The grain filler itself is very thick. Ooh, this can does one open. As you can see, part, partly, partly see the dents on the cans. You don't need to hammer the cans this hard to get the lid closed. So try to avoid that. Somebody did that last semester. Now if you see here, um, the oil-based grain filler has a film on it. You can kind of see it dripping off here, which is primarily the vehicle of the grain filler. But oil-based grain filler, oops, you gotta be careful with this because it will splatter everywhere if you're not, if you pull too hard. It's really thick and really clumpy. So you have the thin oil-based grain filler to the consistency of heavy cream when applying it. Let me show you the water-based again. As you can see here the water-based. Water-based is a little bit thin, is, is a lot thinner, and it's ready to use outside of the can, the jar, whatever you want to call this, the tub. Let's go right into the demonstration as to how to apply grain filler. We're going to start with water-based grain filler, Crystal Lac. So we have our, our water-based grain filler. I'm going to pull some grain filler out. And we're going to take some with our rag. We're going to apply it onto the board, just in a circular motion. You never want to let the uh, grain filler dry or get tacky. When it starts to get tacky, you want to remove it immediately. It's very important. It becomes very difficult to remove once it gets really tacky. You'll end up having to sand it off. So I've got my grain filler. I'm applying it to the board. Take my rag, lay it out. I'm going to take a piece of burlap. And then going across the grain, I'm going to push the grain filler into the grain of the wood. Got it all pushed in. And then if there's any excess, I'm going to remove the excess. The card, the card scraper, just like this. Or the rack. Um, now I'm gonna just going to let it the, sit there and dry for about an hour um, or so. And then I can go ahead and apply my second coat. Now we're going to move on to the oil-based grain filler. So I have a piece of mahogany right here. And I'm going to choose black. 
So here I have Mohawk Black Grain Filler. Let me put this on the bottom, protect my table. So I'm removing the top. Then I'm going to grab a little cup and a stick. Ideally, it should be a spoon, but this works fine. Make sure you don't push too hard or else this will go everywhere. So here, I've pulled out some of the black grain filler from the Mohawk can. Now, because it's too thick to work with, I'm gonna take some paint thinner, and I'm gonna thin it to the consistency of heavy cream. Just gonna mix it all together. You know, you can buddy up with somebody when you're doing this in class. So that way not everybody's standing there mixing the grain filler together or at once. You know, one, one person can do it, hand it over to the next person. Save a little bit of time, make it a little more efficient. So now I've applied the paint thinner. Now I'm mixing everything together. Oops. See, you gotta be careful. This gets everywhere. This is definitely one of those days you wanna have your apron on and gloves. Okay, so I've diluted it a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more grain filler Just to thicken it up, because remember the consistency of heavy cream. I know this is very exciting, it's like watching paint dry, watching me stir this. Got a little chunk there. Okay, so I'd say this consistent this consistency is pretty good right now. So I'm gonna put this off to the side along with my board. Take my grain filler, a rag, and dump the rag in the grain filler. I'm going to apply it to the board. Same circular motion that you would use for, uh, that I showed you for the uh, water based. Applying it. Again, really important, you don't want to let this dry. When you let, especially oil-based grain filler, you do have to sand, you're gonna to have to sand it off when it gets dry. So you just wanna apply it, keep it wet, keep it consistent. All right. So now I'm gonna clean my hands off so you don't contaminate everything. Take a rag, just gonna wipe off some of the excess. Got quite a bit of excess on there. Now I take my burlap and going against the grain,
I'm going to push all that grain filler into the pores, to the grain of the wood. So I'm taking the burlap, I'm going against the grain, and I'm pushing the grain filler into the pores. And I'm just going to take another rag, just give it a quick wipe down, get off any excess. And that is it. And then, then because this is oil based, I am going to let this dry roughly overnight, about, roughly about eight hours before I, I can apply my second coat. So I want to just talk about the uh, burlap for just a minute. The reason why we use the burlap when you go uh, across the grain is we have to push the, the grain filler down into the grain of the wood. If we take the burlap and we go with the grain, we're going to end up pulling out all the grain filler. So by going across the grain, you're pushing that grain filler down into the pores of the wood. And that is the reason for the burlap. Now, Let's have a little fun with grain filling. Grain filling can be kind of fun. You can do lots of, you can get a little artistic with it. So here, let me grab my board. We're gonna set this mahogany one aside. We're gonna go back to our water-based grain filler. Put on a new pair of gloves. We're gonna color it and we're gonna add glitter. So I have my water-based grain filler. I'm going to add a little bit of red tint to the grain filler. I'm going to mix it all up. You get a nice red grain filler. Now, I'm going to add, what color glitter do I have? Let's do blue. I'm feeling a little patriotic. Red, white, and blue. I'm going to add some blue glitter to it. Mix it up again. They're all mixed in there. Kind of makes a little bit of a purple color. And we're going to go through the same process we did before. Can you see it okay? Take our rag, dump it in, apply our green filler. Keeping that circular motion. A little more in there. Now, if you wanted to keep actually keep this red without that little purple tint to it, um, could have used like a silver or a um, or the black. So I applied the glitter to um, the wood, and um, I'm gonna keep going. It's starting to get a little dry right now, so I'm gonna move over to my burlap. And again, going against the grain of the wood, and turn this sideways. I'm going to push the grain filler in. You know, one of these, uh, when I first introduced the glitter to students, to the class, they had asked, why would you ever want to glitter your wood? 
but it's kind of a fun little thing you can do for children's furniture or just kind of like a little bit of a decorative element you can add to it because it's not subtle. I mean, it's not too, you know, in your face. It's kind of, it's a little more on the subtle side. And it's just, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's like a little fun thing to do with finishing. So I'm pushing it all into the wood, the burlap. Take all this excess off the sides here. And there you have glitter grain filler. It's a fun little element you can add to grain filling. So hope you enjoy the process and maybe you'll have a little fun with it in class. Get creative, mix colors, make up your own colors, add some glitter, don't add glitter. Just, you know, have some fun with it. It doesn't have to, everything doesn't have to be so woodsy. This is an opportunity to add lots of color to your wood. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all in class. Thank you.